Welcome back to the show that most people are talking about online. Who wants to be a history nerd? It's been called the toughest Napoleonic quiz online, the funniest Napoleonic quiz online, but it is the only Napoleonic quiz online. Today we are pleased to present the grand final of this, this Iliad-like quest for, 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 for quizzing dominance. And here are our, our, our lucky winners, our talented winners, the, the quiz masters, who will now slaughter each other for your entertainment. We have Ben Colquhoun Grant from the United States of America, otherwise known as William. How are you doing? I'm great. Happy to be here. Ready to win? Yeah, I will see. He's got <laughs> two smart guys going up against, so if this I win, cool. it'll be more luck like last time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to, we'll look forward to seeing how that plays out. The other, one of the other smart guys I'm looking at right now is Jason Hughes. You, uh, you, you, you feeling revved up for this, Jason? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> This is very enthusiastic. enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Happy to be here. Uh, I have my merch from the, yeah. uh, the from our sponsor, from our generous yeah. sponsor. Uh, yes. Product uh, placement. So this is this is the energy we're looking for, Jason. Keep it up. And uh, now, last but not least, Geraint Thatcher. If you were a little bit to your right or left, you look like you're wearing a tiara. So I'm presuming <laughs> expecting <laughs> expecting to yeah, win. Absolutely. <laughs> win to win royally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just gonna. Uh, to be honest, win or lose, I don't care. It's just to uh, have fun. Okay. Right well, you know, this, this is the spirit. This is the spirit. It's it's all in the play. It's all in the play. But there is prizes to be won. So we hope that uh, we wish you luck. Yeah. And now, with that, we will hand over to Jimmy. You all know how the quiz works, but uh, for the benefit of the audience, the quiz will consist of three rounds. In the first round, each of you can get a maximum of at least nine points. At the end of the second round, the lowest scoring participant will be eliminated with the final two going head to head for the grand prize. And now the winner can choose either a copy of my co-host Josh Proven's Wild East, or any mug from the Napoleonic Impression store. So, really, uh, this is for the big bucks. Oh yes, uh, regular retail price about twenty-eight pounds. That's 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 for the book. Reg that's for the book. <laughs> <laughs> regular retail pr price for the mug is fifteen pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all, all to play for then. Yeah. Uh, so, shall we get started? <laughs> yes. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> That's in, in Jeb Bush, please clap style. <laughs> uh, right. So, round one. Before or after? Uh, place, place, place four events in the right chronological order. We start with you, William. Napoleon had four brothers, Lucien, Louis, Jerome, and Joseph. Place them in order of their births. Yeah, I haven't the foggiest idea, so I'm just going to, I guess I will say Jerome, Joseph, uh, Louis, and Lucien. Okay, Josh, with the answers. Josh with the answers, which I will be legally changing my name to very shortly. <laughs> the, the brothers of the emperor were born on the following days. Everybody hold your breath. Joseph, born 7th of July, 1768. Lucien, on the 21st of May, 1775. Louis on the 2nd of September, 1778, and Jerome on 15th of November, 1784. So, unfortunately, William, uh, that is Neil Point for you. Uh, oh, things um, got dramatic very fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but I'm sure you can uh, you can get it back with your second question. But in the meantime, I'm pacing myself. <laughs> yes, you no, can't, you us a can't chance peak. To catch up. Can't can't peak too early. Uh, in the meantime, Jason. The following generals were all elevated to marshal after the first promotion in 1804. Place them in their order of appointment. Louis-Gabriel Suchet, Auguste de Maman, Laurent Gouvion de Saint-Cyr, and Claude Victor Perrin. Um, last one is Victor. Okay. Uh, what's Victor? Uh, okay, so that's 1810. 1812. Okay, where was Victor promoted? Um, I don't want to worry any the audience, but he's actually putting thought into this. <laughs> well, this is actually quite disturbing. This is this is great having Jason on because the the level of the level of you know, takes this he takes this seriously, and that's what we like to see. Yeah, I talk aloud. It's, it's like a Sherlock Holmes. Shouting, uh, shouting into the void. <laughs> yeah, just words start appearing in order yeah. in orders. It's like Sherlock. <laughs> yes. One sec. Okay. Um so the order I have them in is uh, Victor, um, Marmont, uh, then Suchet, and then Saint Cyr. Gosh. Is Jason correct? Is With... Jason correct? Hmm. Well, luckily I have the answers in front of me so I can tell you. In order of appointment, we have Victor in 1807, after Friedland in brackets, Maman in 1809, after Valgram, Suchet in 1811, after Tarragona, and Saint-Cyr in 1812, after First lost. That is the full complement of two points uh, to you, Jason. Very well done. Always a strong contender. So, Grant, okay. it's now up, right. to, up to you to try to follow Jason's example. He's hydrating now, by the way. <laughs> He's readying for the next go. You know, it's, it's very, it's, it's like watching a tennis match. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Grant, place these plots, assassinations, and mysterious deaths in order of their occurrence. Okay. The assassination of Spencer Percival, the death of Admiral Villeneuve, the death of Marshal Berthier, and the infernal machine uh, attack, or the Rue de saint nicaise Okay, um, the infernal machine attack was first. Uh, that was when he was consul. Um, uh, uh, then it would be the death of Villeneuve um, after Trafalgar. Uh, then, yeah, then it would be Percival, uh, and then it would, and then the last one would be uh, Marshal Berthier. Josh. Grant was very confident in giving his answers. He was. He, like to be? he was. I think he's just showing up because of Jason's preparation. He just said, right, I'm just good. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and whack this out in my head. I'm just going to just going to go straight in memory. Right. Was he right, though? So the answers are for this, this mysterious series of questions. The infernal machine attack was on the 24th of December, 1800. Death of Admiral Villeneuve on the 22nd of April, 1806. Death of Spencer Percival on the 11th of May, 1812. And the death of Marshal Berthier on the 1st of June, 1815. So, Garant, you have managed to follow Jason's example and get the full two points. Mm. Now, as, as per usual, we go in reverse order. So, Garant, you're up again. Uh, these allied officers were killed or mortally wounded in battle. Place them in order of their demise. Piotr Bagration, Gerhard von Scharnforst, Jean-Victor Marie Moreau, and Jean Le Marchand. Um, the three of them, the last one I don't know. They're, but for uh, the Le Marche, 
Um, I have no idea. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. I'm just going to. I'm just going to clarify something here. He didn't say La Marche. He said La Marchand. Yeah. La Marche. Yeah. British oh, cavalry Marche. general. Ah, oh, La Marche. Yeah. Sorry, I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, that was 1812. Um, La Marche first, then Bagration. Then Moreau, then Scharnhorst. Okay, Josh. Right. The answers to question four, which I hold in a secret vault in an undisclosed location, otherwise known as my left hand, it, which is off the screen and therefore nobody cares about it. Jean Le Marchant on the 22nd of July, 1812 at Salamanca. Piotr Bagration, on the 24th of September, 1812, after Borodino, mortally wounded, you know. Gerhard von Scharnhorst, on the 28th of June, 1813, after Lutzen. Uh, Jean-Victor Marie Mao, on the 2nd of September, 1813, after Toyerston. So, Gerhard, you still managed to get one point out of two with only the last two in the wrong order. So, Gerhard, that's actually puts you temporarily Hello? at least in the lead with three points so uh so jason uh we now turn to you um for uh where are we okay um place these allied commanders in the order they arrived at the battle of quatre bras sir thomas picton Baron Perponcher, uh, Bernard of Saxe Weimar, and the Prince of Orange. In particular struggles on this question, it came courtesy of Josh Proven. So. Quattro <laughs> <laughs> Bra, not my specialty. <laughs> not that anything is, but. Um... Pleasure to play a part in this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I have them. Um, this is probably going to be completely wrong, but uh, I have first the Prince of Orange, um, then uh, Sax Weimar, or Feimar, and then Baron, um, what was his last name again? Pepinchet. Pe 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 Um And then Picton, last. Okay. Uh, Josh, is Jason correct? Well, Jimmy, we'll, we'll see, because the answers are forthcoming. Much as the reinforcements at Catra Bras were. <laughs> so, first of all, we have first on the scene at Catra Bras, the night before the battle, actually, oh. was Bernard Saxweimer, Prince Bernard Saxweimer. Yeah. Then his divisional commander, Baron Perponchet, and then the next day coming up to uh, look at the position and say everything's all good. Prince of Orange, and then in the nick of time, once the battle had started, Sir Thomas Picton, head of the so, division, fifth division at Waterloo, actually. Uh, so that means, Jason, you managed to score one point in with that question. So you draw level with Grant. So, William, we're now back to you, and let's see whether you can uh, narrow the gap to the leaders. Place these battles fought during Suvorov's 1799 Italian campaign in order. The Battle of Novi, the Battle of San Giuliano, otherwise known as the First Battle of Marengo, the Battle of the Trebia, and the Battle of Cassano. All right, well, I'm pretty sure I'm not cl clear on any of these, but I'll give it a go. Uh, Let's go with uh, first Marengo, or what was the, what was the other thing you called it? San San Giuliano. Yep. San Giuliano, uh, Norvi, Cassano, and Trebia. Josh, we turn to you as always, as the indeed. final arbiter of these things. Indeed, indeed, I am the final arbiter. I am the guy you go on a quest to find, the guy who lives in the mountains in a hermit's cave and has answers. Or I have a YouTube channel with a moderate amount of followers, and I'm the guy who's been told to read the answers. 
First comes the Battle of Cassano on the 27th of April, then first Marengo on the 16th of May, then Trebia, 17 to the 20th of June, incidentally Trebia being a battle where Hannibal fought during the Punic Wars, and then the Battle of Novi on the 15th of August. Just happened to be in Napoleon's birthday. Um, not that he was there. <laughs> 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 yep. Um, but that means, if uh, I'm not wrong, that uh, William is still on zero points, very unfortunately. Consistency is, is important. To be fair, Savarov's 1799 campaign is not as well known as it should be, and uh, the, <laughs> the, these, this is the final, and I'm afraid we have to be quite ruthless in some of the questions. Savarov <laughs> <laughs> would absolutely yeah. approve of your ruthlessness. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's yeah, everything is still to play for. We've still got quite a few points Indeed. up for grabs. Score-wise, we're looking at three all uh, between Jason and Grant, and unfortunately, LQ Grant uh, trails with zero. However, um, I feel like being the only person to consistently get zero points on these on the on the on the round one deserves just... the <laughs> much vaunted wrong answer bonus point. Where most egregious, most most egregious wrong answer gets a bonus point just because. I feel like giving it out. So you're getting an extra point for that because nobody achieved what you have achieved in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, William's now on one point, and uh, the the gap is now only two points behind the leaders. Everything is to play for it in round two, which we call, as we always have, "Who am I?" Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> So, because we don't have a, a, a score or anybody to do music for this, so I'm all you've got, unless it's a Russian song, which Jimmy will just. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. So, uh, again, for the benefit of the audience, uh, we will give you five clues, which get progressively easier to help you identify a particular individual. If you answer correctly from the first clue, you get five. Five points at the second clue it's four points and so on until one point with the fifth clue and at each, each opportunity if you guess wrong your rivals can steal if they give the correct answer they will get the number of points the question was worth but if they give the wrong answer they will lose the points they have accumulated so far and at the end of each at the end of this round the player of the lowest score is Eliminated. So, William. I'll take him outside and shoot him. <laughs> Lucky we're not doing this live, otherwise we could literally do <laughs> With paintball guns, of course. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not monsters. <laughs> musket. It's not insane. I mean, just, yeah, just... I mean, with a musket, you have an even chance of, you know, depending on how far away you start. Uh, yeah, like a hundred yards. Yeah. See if... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what at least get a running thing? start. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, William, here, here is your first clue. I was born near Hanover in 1776. I can guess it could be any German. Actually, it could be someone in the British royal family too, couldn't it? Um, no, I can't. Well, I'll just, since, since there's no penalty for guessing, mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll just guess Friedrich William, the Duke of Brunswick. How about that? Okay. Duke of Brunswick. Uh, a fair shout. Uh, Josh, is the Duke of Brunswick right? The uh, shout is a little echoey, I'm afraid. It uh, didn't quite land. So I'm afraid it's not the Duke of Brunswick. Okay. Either of them. I I, I presume no one wants to challenge at this stage. <laughs> cowards, <That's right>. cowards. <laughs> um, you are correct, yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm here entirely for the content. We'll egg you on to disaster. <laughs> Lucas style. William, your second clue. I supported Prussia's decision 
to go to war with Napoleon in 1806. Someone who didn't like Napoleon. The list has just been cut in like half. <laughs> Again, since there's no penalty for guessing, I'll go with, uh, was it Louise? Is that her name? The Queen of Prussia? Queen Louise of Prussia. Josh, is Queen Louise of Prussia the answer we have on our card? Literally just there. I just joked that this question, you know, did not do anything to narrow stuff down. But Queen Louise of Prussia is the correct answer. <laughs> he has sure, pulled it out of the bag not. again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he seems to have a knack for doing this on this round. But uh, William has managed to catapult himself into the lead <laughs> on five points, which puts the pressure on Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Question two, clue number one. I was born in St. Petersburg in 1754. Um, okay, so old Russian dude. Um, uh, Kutuzov. Kutuzov. Josh, is Mikhail Kutuzov the correct answer? The uh, fox of the north is not the correct answer, no. Um, no one wants to challenge, I'm guessing. <laughs> no, let's No, no, nope. okay. So, <laughs> clue number two, which should make things a little easier. I initiated the Second League of Armed Neutrality in 1800. 1800 Second League. Oh, is that... Yeah, um, so, Sir Paul, um... Tsar, Tsar Paul, otherwise known as Tsar Pavel, otherwise known as Emperor Paul, <laughs> or Emperor Pavel, or Pavel um, Petrovich Romanov. Paul from down uh, the road. Is, <laughs> is Paul from Petersburg. Paul, yeah. is, is, is Paul the right answer then? Paul. Poor, poor Tsar Paul. Poor Tsar Paul. Murdered. Murdered by my nefarious assassins is the correct answer. Oh, you know, things are getting very interesting. <laughs> Jason is back in the lead on seven. So, Grant, it's all you, down to you. And question three. Clue number one. I was born in Fijiak. In 1790. Uh, I'll, I'll need yeah. another clue. I you you can, even but it. just a, yeah. Random French guy. Just you can, <laughs> you can guess a random French guy if you want. Belgium, Swiss, fairly. to be honest, it could be either. <laughs> <laughs> fairly, fairly, fairly young, random French Belgian guy. <laughs> uh, no, no, nothing. Okay, nothing. we will we will go to uh, the second clue then. Unless anybody wants to. <laughs> really obvious from that really I, obvious I, I don't clue really there. think it's in anyone else's interest to challenge right now <laughs> um, don't hear anything else from Jason and William until the round is over now <laughs> yeah so Grant with your second clue I sided with Napoleon in 1815 and was charged with treason um, nay nay Marshal Ney. Josh Proven. Was Marshal Ney born in Fijiak in 1790 and did he side with Napoleon in 1850? No, no, he did. No, he wasn't. <laughs> no, he wasn't. No, well, hang on, I'll just go ask Josh Proven. Hey, Josh. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> was, was Marshal Ney born in Fijiak in 1790? Says no. He was You're charged right. with treason, though, so that's... He was charged yeah, with treason, yeah, yeah, I mean. yes. <laughs> um, so, I guess no, no one wants to try to steal that one. So, question three. For three points to allow you to leapfrog uh, William. So, this is... No, we're, we're, we're getting to the tenth stages now. <laughs> Napoleon personally granted me exemption from military service on several occasions. 
Oh, God. Uh, that's taken the wind out of my sails because I was going to say Muran. Um... <laughs> was he born in 1790? <laughs> well, I mean, theor- I mean, yeah, if you really wanted to, you could make the case that because Napoleon refused Murat, you know, Murat's offer of help in 1815, that was kind of ex- exempting him. But yeah, <laughs> he was kind of childish, just so you can <laughs> <laughs> at times. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm going to need another clue. I've you're going to really need been... another clue. Yeah. Okay. That's, you're you're going to pass on that one? That's that's fine. This one will allow you to draw level with William. And I have no idea what we're going to do to break the tie if that happens. So, uh, so clue number four for you, Grant. My ability to speak Coptic helped me in my greatest endeavour. Well, there's one, there's someone who went with him on the Egypt ex- expedition, but um, I honestly, I honestly couldn't, couldn't answer that question. Um, I don't know. You don't know. Well. Uh, anyone else? Uh, anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, to, we... set your, to set your mind at ease, Grant, you know, I can have you having passed on the question. I can tell you that this man did not actually go to Egypt. No. Yeah. Uh, so, do we want to give Garant another guess at, uh, at, at, at question four with that with, with I that could, knowledge? I couldn't, I couldn't even. Uh, I'm trying to think, who declined to go with him to Egypt? And oh God. Um, I, you know what? I don't know. Then I don't know. But we will, we will, we will carry on with the, mm. with the, with with the final clue because you know that's 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 what we do here. Um, <laughs> clue number five. I deciphered the Rosetta Stone, and I'm known as the father of Egyptology. No idea. You don't. <laughs> no. You don't know I the name know. of the guy who deciphered the Rosetta Stone. Does no anyone idea. else? <laughs> In order to get a token extra point. No, I, I'm not risking all my points. <laughs> yes, <laughs> would make it more dramatic, but <laughs> do it, do it, it do it. No, <laughs> <don't> compel you. Right. <laughs> so yeah, um, again. Blame Josh for this one. (laughs) Josh, since it was you who wrote the question, would you mind giving the answer? The answer of this uh, unbeatable question is a gentleman by the name of Jean-Francois Champollion. No no idea. Did not know that. So, I agree with him, but I would not have that. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was fairly tricky, but you know, Josh. <laughs> uh, so th- yeah, that was that was a cruel question by me. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, it has it has led us to this point, which is uh, again a very. This is this is this is new ground. This is new ground. We've never had someone not score anything in the first round, and we've never had someone not. Get to who am I at some point? So this kind of speaks to how challenging the questions are for the final, as they should be. So we now go to the head-to-head round. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Each of you will take turns to give correct answers from a list. If you answer incorrectly, or if you give an answer that's already been given, you're out. You have the option to pass if you think that there are no more correct answers, therefore forcing your opponent to give a correct answer if they want to win. So, Jason, uh-huh. as the highest scoring player on seven points of the, um, from the previous two rounds, it is your uh, it is your choice as to which category to choose. So, once again, we have three categories. Generals, ships, and empires. Generals worked <laughs> out great for me last time, so we're going to go with generals. <laughs> we're going to go with generals again. Well, 
drawing, Both on, drawing on previous and, experience wise, perhaps, but we'll see how it goes. But bear, bear, bear in mind that William's previous experience was also generals. Yeah, it's very popular so, choice. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be a fairly similar round to what, uh, what William had in his quiz. The topic at hand is Napoleon's marshals who have roads named after them in Paris. So, Jason. <laughs> he loves it. He loves the question. He's absolutely so pleased with his choice now. He should have gone with empires. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, roads named after Napoleon's generals in I'm Paris. Not gonna... Napoleon's marshals. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That does narrow it down. Okay. So... I was just guessing who has roads. Uh, <laughs> think, of, think of Rude. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The pressure comes this. right from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> will, the, will the pressure be too much? Quite possibly. Um, will we break his spirit? I don't regret this choice. <laughs> Where do I go with the view? The view. Louis Nicolas Davout. The guy Marshall, does he oh. have a road or a street or a boulevard or an avenue named after him in Paris? Well, the question is as well, will Jason be the first person in the history of, of, this, of this show to go out on the first one? <laughs> Luckily for you, a piece of blinding deduction. There is a some there is there is a rue de vous, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's it's a bit of a Darn it, rue de vous would have been so much better. Come on. True. <laughs> True. Right. Sure. Sure. Uh, he is on the list. He is on the list. So William, it's now your turn. All right. Um all right. Well then I'm just going to have to guess who would get uh streets named after them. Uh uh, by the Empire. I guess I'll go with, I guess I'll just go with Marshal Berthier. Berthier, Napoleon's Chief of Staff. First on the list of Marshals. Is he somewhere on the list of Napoleon's Marshals who have rooms named up? He is first on the list of Marshals and he is first on our list too, Jimmy. Yep, because that was what? taken from the list of Marshals. <laughs> um, <laughs> What, uh, what, 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 is it a rue, is it a boulevard, what is it's it? A, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a boulevard. A lot of these are boulevards. <laughs> rue de vue would have been just so fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Jason. Paris is just, every, all of, everything about Paris has just, you know, disappeared from Wrong. me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll go with Kellerman. Kellerman. The victor of Valmy, the Duke of Valmy. Josh, Please don't is there <laughs> Boulevard Kellerman in Paris? Apparently there is, Jimmy. Apparently there is Boulevard Kellerman. And yep. maybe there should be a Bistro Kellerman as well. Sounds like a thing called a Bistro. Why not? Why not? Cafe Kellerman. Uh, so, William, your next educated guess. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with uh, marshals who died in service because those are the ones you're most likely to name streets after and say uh, Jean Lang. Marshal Lang. Was Lang on our list? Is Lang on our list? <laughs> was, but we got rid of him. <laughs> just because. <laughs> Jean Lang is in, was indeed enshrined forever in Paris. Yeah, yeah. Lan is very much, very much in the fabric of Paris. Jason, back to you. All right. Um, <laughs> so let's go off of who doesn't. So Bernadotte obviously doesn't. Marmande obviously doesn't. So um, probably, yeah. Um, we'll go with Ney. Ney. Michelle Ney who's already been proffered as an answer once before in this uh, mm. uh, in this show. But is Ney the correct answer? 
Or is the name one of the correct answers? <laughs> <laughs> is he on the list? Do you, do you mean Jimmy? <laughs> that, that is indeed what I mean. That's what he means. That's what he means, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, Michel Ney is on the list. Of course, he on is on the list. list. So, having had Ney as an answer, what are you going to go for? Well, I'm just going to stick with my theory of taking out guys who were picking uh, marshals who were killed in battle and go with uh, Marshal Bessier. Bessier, uh, commander of Napoleon's Guard Cavalry. Josh, is the loyal master of Bessier on the list? He is indeed on the map of Paris. He is indeed. He is indeed. And carry on with you, Jason. Okay. <laughs> carry on, Jason. One of the lesser known comedies of the 60s. I jest, but actually, Carry On Jason could literally have been them sending up Jason and the Golden Fleece. It could actually. You <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. could have been. Sid James could have played you. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um... <laughs> okay. Uh, I could be completely wrong, but we'll go with it. Uh, Messina. Josh. Andre, Andre Messina. Andre Messina. Also on the map of yeah. Paris. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. William. Move, uh, move on to you again. All right, well, I'm going to take a chance, given that he served quite long after uh, the First Empire, to think that at some point somebody, they named a street after him and go with Sult. Sult, who indeed served as a prime minister of the... Of the Anything Japan you might people. care to mention, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Was William correct in his assumptions? Is he on the list? Is is, I mean, yeah, that's that's a pretty good call. Pretty good. Yep. Pretty good logic there. He's there. Good Jean logic de there. Jean de Dieu suit. John of God suit. <laughs> Do not understand that name Indeed. at all. <laughs> He's the son of God. <laughs> I doubt no, it. that's that's Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. Okay, uh, um, we'll go with Suchet. Suchet. Is there a Boulevard Suchet in Paris? Well, if you ever find yourself in Paris, I do recommend you sachet down the Boulevard Suchet. <laughs> sure, it is a lovely place to go. Very good, very good. So sometimes I think up good ones. Oh, William, William was hoping, like last time, Suchet would be the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, William, it's now it's now up to you again. You, the ball has is back in your court. Take a shot and go with uh, Marshal Victor. Marshal Just Victor. Victor sounds like a good name for a street. <laughs> well, is this uh, is is does Victor indeed sound like a good good name for a street? Apparently, he sounded like a good name for a street indeed. Cloud Victor is on the list. Yep. You can find him in any A to Z of Paris. Back to you, Jason. We'll go with uh, Saint Cyr. Uh, Guillaume Saint Cyr. Well, Napoleon's later marshals, but perhaps one of his best is, uh, is Saint Cyr uh, on, 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 the, on the map of Paris. Is he on the map of Paris? Is he is he indeed on the map of Paris? Could you just No no one is by the way allowed to be on their phones right now, okay? <laughs> Seriously, right? That's Grant. Disqualification. Right? <laughs> Nobody is allowed to be paying Grant there <laughs> to be messaging them. I heard a message <laughs> on his phone. Is this what is happening here? <laughs> My goodness, we should have had more security. We should have been thinking of security. I mean, I think we're being scammed. You can tell it's one of my books on the line here. But yes, yes, that Laurent de Gouvion Saint Cyr, who actually has one of the classiest names of all the marshals, I think, Saint Cyr. Uh, mm -hmm. Sounds like best, as he should be with a name like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. William. Well, we're, we're back with you. We've, uh, quite a quite a few names already ticked off. 
Well, let's go with uh, one of the guys that was in the first class of Marshall's, uh, Marshall Augereau. Augereau, who uh, served as Napoleon's subordinate in Italy. Josh, does Augereau, despite having fought for about five different nations, uh, <laughs> deserve to have a road named after him in Paris? Well, again, he has one of those names, you know, Augereau. <laughs> He's on the list, yes. He is on the list, although it's only a Rue Augereau rather than a Boulevard Augereau, so. Rue Augereau. Not as good as Rue de Vue, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are, there are probably Rue de Vue in other, other places yeah. in France, so, you know. Um, Any French people watching for some reason? English quiz show with a bunch of people you don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know if we're wrong. Please tell us. I, I want there to be a rude view. <laughs> Jason. Oh God. Okay. That doesn't sound like a French street name. <laughs> but at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, can I give us that or? Is there anyone obvious I'm missing? I mean, probably. Name a road after him. I mean, I like him, but there's no way <laughs> somebody named a road after him. <laughs> In fact, everybody liked him, but no, there's no way. Uh, <laughs> there probably is. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Internal monologue. In <laughs> 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 Jason is literally exhibiting his second personality on screen as we speak. <laughs> yes, <laughs> multiple personality disorder. We'll go with uh, Pony. Uh, or, <laughs> Pony. 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 is Marshal and Prince Joseph Pony. Is he is is he on the map of Paris despite being a Pole? Poles, as you said, were very popular amongst imperial circles. Josef Poniatowski is on the list. And see how French indeed. people pronounce that and tell you how to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> Poniatowski. <laughs> and, uh, and indeed, you know, with William's uh, earlier logic of uh, marshals who were killed in battle. Yep. Uh, so, William, who are you going to go for now? You know what, based on the Based on Jason's logic of foreigners who Frenchmen like, let's go with a, someone with a Scottish name, Marshall MacDonald. Marshall Jacques Mac MacDonald. Oh, old MacDonald may have had a farm, but did he have a road named after him in Paris? You see, I'm not the only one who can do word play here. Jimmy's, Jimmy's, <laughs> Jimmy's challenging me, challenging my entire... <laughs> Into, on <laughs> my entire reason for living. Excuse me while I just leave the show now because apparently I don't need to be here. <laughs> Jacques uh, MacDonald is on many streets in Paris, one presumes. He has a very, you know, the MacDonald chain is probably in Paris. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yes, wasn't, 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 wasn't there a scandal last year or something, like 20, 20, 2019, about the McDonald's hamburgers? Outselling uh, uh, Jean Bert. Yeah, I think there was. Yeah, I think the people <laughs> insulted about it. But yes, he is on. He is literally he is, on the list. Yes, he's, he is this this McDonald, not this. Donald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, Jason, uh, back to you. Do I go with the one I like or the one who's more likely? I think go with the one that's more likely. Uh, we'll go with Udino. Udino. The uh, the guy who who seems to be bulletproof. Is there a Rue Oudino in in Paris? Is there a Rue Oudino? Is Nick, as he might be called in America? <laughs> <coughs> did he get it? Did he get into the map of Paris in the nick of time? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 He is in Paris. He is on the street map. You will walk through yes. Paris. You will walk over, through, and across Ujino. <laughs> so, we're now back with William. 
my list is running uh, short here, so <laughs> I guess I'll go with, uh, how about Jordan? Jordan, the Victor Fleru, the, uh, the hapless advisor to King Joseph, would he have got himself a street named after him? Josh. Apparently so. Apparently so. Okay. Jean-Baptiste Jourdain is on the list of Parisian okay. rude yes. arts where people can stroll. Uh, just gets Marshall's book. Surreptitiously. I'm just stretching. Falls off chair. Oh, God. Um... Who would name a road after him? Yeah, I'm one of the only people who would ever name a road after him. So we'll go with it. Mortier. It is Marshal Mortier on, on the Parisian roadmap. His entire name isn't on it because that is a really long name. Mortier is actually not only someone you would name a road after, but uh, apparently someone in Paris Planning Commission or whatever the heck it was decided <laughs> Decide with Edouard Adolphe Casimir Joseph Mortier. Yeah. On the list. Why did we have why do we have his full name down here, Jimmy? Why is that important? <laughs> you could name any part of his name and win. So William, uh do you have anything to come after Mortier? All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chance here and think that even though even though he's uh somewhat infamous for his conduct in Napoleon's last battle. That they'd still have named a street after him because he had a career afterwards and go with Marshal Grouchy. Marshal Grouchy. Where is Grouchy? Uwe Grouchy. Je ne sais pas. Where is Grouchy? As, as William rightly surmised, Grouchy's lack of presence, let's say, at the Battle of Waterloo meant that he was not deserving of a road name. Unfortunately, that means, William, after a very tense battle. Titanic struggle. Between the two of you. Uh, that means Jason gets the grand prize and gets the choice of whether he wants any mug from the Napoleon Confession store or a, or a copy of Josh Proven's Wild East. What, what do you, would you prefer... Um, uh, random Napoleonic animal stuff, or would you prefer uh, the British in Japan? Well, considering I already have a mug, <laughs> and I love books, um, I'm going to go with uh, Josh's book. You're so go I, with I have Chris. been interested in it, so... That's, that's, that's a very good choice. A uh, very classy <laughs> choice there, Jason. Yes. I'm well, take a moment to congratulate Jason on a well-fought uh, mm -hmm. campaign. Well done, Jason. It was an yeah. honor. It was an yeah, honor. Both of you as well. <laughs> well done, Jason. <laughs> no, you were stretching the very Marshall's good. list quite a bit, and uh, <laughs> Grant just got very unlucky with his <laughs> second round. This was a very close uh, episode all the way through, actually, I'm pleased to say, for the final. Um, it obviously shows that it wasn't just flukes that got you all through to here the, to this point. You all played exceptionally well through the previous episode, and you played extremely well, all of you, tonight. Uh, and so congratulations to all of you for yep. dealing with well done. third yeah. questions that we threw at you. And um, uh, congratulations to the winner of the entire uh, Napoleon, uh, Napoleon 2020 slash 21 series, <laughs> the bony head... <laughs> The history nerd is Jason Hughes. Well done. And, and I, feel, I feel like this, is, uh, this has been preordained because uh, Jason's mug is actually the history nerd mug, if I'm... Will he question everything so, now? Is this just... The universe has granted <laughs> destiny. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> I am like Napoleon. <laughs> in incidentally, out of interest, and given, you know, what sort of um, the delivery times have been like sort of over the Christmas period. Have any of you actually got your postcards yet? Yes. 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 Okay, you've all got them. That's yeah. that's that's good. Ah, yeah. oh, you chose Bartolomeu. Yes. I did yes. that. Yeah, I, I hey, love this design. It's very. Good. I think Garant chose the same one. 
Yeah, um, well really done, guys. Yeah. yeah, though I was very um, tempted by the Nutcracker as well because that's <laughs> very neat. <laughs> um, William, William chose uh, Santa Claus of it. Yeah, Santa ah, that's, that, they were all good one. ones, so yeah. can't go wrong. Well, Santa Clausewitz had a good pun on it. I didn't have any puns on mine. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, we, were, we, were, we were trying to think of what sort of wordplay to, to put on it. And it was like, <laughs> uh, you know, where, where do we put the words? <laughs> where did the, the words come from? And where will the words come for me to wrap up this episode? Well, where is Grisha? Yes. <laughs> where, where is Grisha? Is is <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> He's not yeah. in Paris. He's not in Paris. Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and do whatever the heck else you do on your Lever YouTube video. And then go shop on Napoleonic Impressions, and then go buy my book, and... Uh, <laughs> yes. Everybody will be happy. The world will be fixed if you do. We'll, we, we will have money, and you will have brilliant things. Yes. <laughs> world fixed. Done. Thanks for watching. Yeah.